Good afternoon. We had a presbytery meeting last night, and the topic of the sermon at that meeting ended up becoming a theme that we revisited throughout the meeting. We and our churches are like hot air balloons, and if we want to rise, we need to get rid of our ballast. We need to jettison the weight, the things that hold us down and impede us. Now, at that presbytery meeting, we talked about things that may hold churches down, that weigh us down and prevent us from going where God is leading us. Sometimes they can be literal, physical things. Have you ever noticed how hard it is to throw away anything at church? Maybe it's because we don't want to offend the person who gave that to the church. But often it's because we've imbued so much meaning to these things over the years that we just can't imagine getting rid of them. And so we clutter our closets and we fill our hallways with stuff that we don't need anymore. Maybe we hold on to it because of the past that it represents. Or maybe we think that, oh, someday we're going to use this again even though there's a part of our brain that's a little bit more logical that says, no, you're not. Now, I can relate to this personally as we're getting ready to move. We're clearing out and packing up all of the stuff that we have had in our home for the past 30 years. Some of it is relatively easy to get rid of. For example, in the basement, I have a pile of scrap lumber. This is stuff that I've kept because I thought, well, maybe it'll come in handy someday. And every now and then, so I actually was able to use something from that pile of lumber. But that's not something that I'm going to take with me to the new house. Other things are harder to get rid of. For example, I went through a bin of my childhood keepsakes and through souvenirs from trips that we've taken. Now, some of these things are worth holding on to. But there are other things I know I'll never look at again. I know I'm never going to use. For example, do I really need those high school senior pictures from classmates I've lost touch with? Probably not. But it's harder to do that than I realized it would be. Recently, my wife shared an article that she had found that helped us both understand why this can be so hard. What we're packing up and what we're trying to get rid of are not just physical things, but they represent something important in our lives. We're not just packing up knickknacks, we're packing up our emotions. And sometimes we cling to things because that means we're holding on to who we were in the past, not who we are now. There's no reason to keep it because it doesn't represent me anymore, but that's hard to wrap my mind around. That's hard to accept. What is true of the physical stuff that's hard to get rid of is also true of the emotional and spiritual and mental baggage that we carry. These are the things that block God's movement in our lives because we've become trapped in our patterns of thought. These are things that bind us to what was or bind us to what we wish things would be. Part of being a disciple of Jesus Christ means following where he leads us. And that means letting go of the things that are not taking us where Jesus wants us to go. The challenge for us is to be like those first disciples when Jesus invited them to follow him. They left their fishing nets, they left their boats, they left their families, they left everything in order to respond and follow him. But more often, we're like those people that Jesus met in Luke chapter 9 when he invited them to follow him. One person said, first let me bury my father. And another one said, first let me go and say goodbye to my family. Now it seems pretty harsh that Jesus didn't want them to do these very reasonable things before following him, burying family, saying goodbye to family. But here's the problem. Anytime Jesus says, follow me, and we respond, first let me do something else, that means that that something else is first in our lives, that it comes first before Jesus does. Jesus asks, no, Jesus demands that if he is our Lord, then nothing else will come first in our lives. 
And that includes all of our preconceptions and memories and ideas of what we want to be. We have to release them all, like dropping weight off of a hot air balloon, in order to follow him. We find the same sentiment in Hebrews chapter 12. Here we read, Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. The image that Hebrews gives us is the image of a runner who wants to run a race, but in order to run it, you need to get rid of whatever it is you're wearing or whatever is on the ground in front of you that might trip you up. As a church, especially a church like Old Union Presbyterian, a church that has a rich history, a church that is full of tradition, this can be really hard to do. We have our ideas of what our church should be based on what our church used to be. And that might be whom God is calling us to be, because often the seeds of the future lie in the soil of the past. But the past might not be whom God wants us to be. God may have something completely new and different in mind for us. And until we're ready to get rid of these other things, we're never going to be open to that. It's true for a church, but it is true in each of our lives. So let me ask you, what are you holding on to that hinders you, that entangles you as you seek to run the race that God has set before you? What is it that keeps you from fixing your eyes on Jesus and on Jesus alone? Would you pray with me, please? Lord Jesus Christ, let us put you first. Help us to get rid of everything that hinders us and entangles us, everything that weighs us down. Give us the courage to release these things so that we can fix our eyes upon you and to see where you are leading us into the future. I ask this for us as a church, but I also ask this for each of us in our own personal lives. Amen. Thanks for joining me. We'll talk again later.